How's it going, everybody? One of the things that uh, you'll run into when you start getting into more of the complicated setups with your uh, Cisco stuff, like CCNP and CCIE stuff, um, you'll find that uh, things like GNS3, especially on uh, when you get outside of the routing and switching track and service provider and, and yeah, security, um, you'll run into an issue where you won't be able to use GNS3's built-in Wireshark capability. Now this is a pretty common issue that you run into. So I was I was trying to find a way to um, allow that to happen, and um, there I, I've heard there's a way to do it in Viral, and I'm still playing around with trying to figure out how to get that to work and you know um, stuff like that. There is a way to do it inside of iOS XE. Now if you're running CSR 1000V in your environment, which I happen to be running quite a few of them. So don't get excited about the topology you see behind or on your screen. That's more or less something I'm just playing around with and testing some features out, making sure that I can get stuff to work. But a couple of things that really help out is being able to do a packet capture. So I'm going to walk you guys through how to set up the specific to iOS XE embedded packet capture. Now, if you've never heard of that, basically what EPC does is it allows you to run a packet capture of traffic as it goes through the device, packets that are being originated from the device, things like that. So you can do a multi-point capture. So you can do um, a capture from just one interface. So like for instance, if you're sending, um, if you're sending like pings out, for instance, and you want to see what they look like inside of Wireshark, you can do that. Now the cool thing about it is, is you can go through here and you can set the, send the ping, and then you can see what it would look like in a packet capture. So once you've enabled uh, the uh, embedded packet capture, you, you start it, get everything situated with it, then you can go ahead and export it via TFTP. Now one of the things that I'm doing on these routers, so I'll do a quick show IP interface brief here, is I've actually got on the Gig1 interface, I've actually, I just typed in, uh, I got a DHCP address uh, from my home router. And basically all I'm doing from there is I go in and I have a virtual machine that's running inside of the same host that I'm able to TFTP tra uh, anything from the router to the virtual machine or down from the virtual machine to the router. It goes both directions. So one of the things that I did is I set up embedded packet capture so that I would be able to do uh, you know traces, see exactly how everything is going so I could see exactly how it's being set up and running in Wireshark because unfortunately in you know this environment here, I can't run a packet capture um, on the link between R1 and R2. So the easy way to do this would be to go in here and set it up as such. I just go in and enable the better packet capture, and then go go from there. So you can set it up to match on uh, the ingress interface on 23 and the uh, in uh, both directions on 23 and both directions on 12. And as you have traffic going from, say, R1 to R3, you can capture all that traffic. It's very, very cool. It's very, very beneficial if you're learning how to uh, do this stuff. Now, mind you, most of the stuff that I'm doing this on is uh, from a teaching perspective. You know, I've got a lot of uh, courses I'm working on. So this is a way for me to uh, build out and break down stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and I'm doing a bunch of packet captures and debug outputs and stuff like that. And any type of issues, I'm saving those files so that I'm not wasting a ton of time trying to set it up in a video. It's already good to go. I can just open up the file, double click on it, and launch it, and then walk you through exactly what's going on. So that's the general idea of how I go about doing things. So I've already got um, embedded packet capture running here on R2, but I don't have it enabled on R1. That's where I want to go do it. I want to do it as a, as a brand new implementation. So here, the way we're going to do this, it's actually really simple to do. From uh, so from privilege mode, you're going to type in monitor capture, and then you have a, a couple options here. We're going to say, well, in this case, we have to name it. We're going to say, in this case, we're just going to say ICMP. We're going to keep it uh, lowercase name. It's just easier to type in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the buffer, and we're going to say the size of the buffer, or sorry, the uh, circular. What the When you're setting up the buffer, you need to set it up kind of like you would with syslog. If you're going to do syslog, by default, you get 4,096 bytes, which I believe is 4K in syslog. 
Now, obviously, you can increase that uh, that size uh, for syslog. In this case here, I need to make the uh, the buffer circular. So, which means that as packets, as, as anything that's captured, I should say, anything that's captured in the buffer, what will end up happening is when it starts here, it'll start to fill out the buffer, depending on how big I make the buffer. And then anything old is then immediately just dropped off. And then anything new is captured. So I can go ahead here and set the size. And the size I'll set to be, let's say 100 meg. You know, something not super big, but not super small. So I can do that. And then I'm going to come up back up here, and I'm going to say that I'm going to do a couple matches. The first match I'm going to do, I'm going to match any traffic on interface gig one or gig one dot twelve, and and what direction am I going to be capturing the traffic in on? Well, I'm going to say both. Okay, so I did that. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and do a show monitor capture, and I believe it's going to ask me for the name, and we're going to say ICMP, which is going to be a ping. And then it's telling us that's how um, what we're going to do. So we're going to be tracking on gig interface 1.12, both directions. The status is inactive. We haven't enabled the packet capture yet. It's going to capture all packets. And the buffer type is circular. So remember, anything old that fills up and is taking up 100 megs of space is just going to get dropped off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up here and we're going to um, go to the ICMP. And we're going to click on start and hit the enter key. Now it's been started. You'll get a syslog message saying it's been enabled. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ping 10.1.2.2. Okay, they're pinged. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on R2. I'm going to hit the up arrow here and I'm going to do start and I'm going to do the, the same ping here. Give me one second while I find. And there I have it. So now I've got it but bidirectional. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the up arrow and I'm going to go stop. I'm going to go to CSR1. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. So now it's been stopped. Now, what actually needs to happen now is I've got I've captured packets. Now what I need to do is I need to get them off the router. This is where that enabling DCP on the gig interface on VLAN 1 comes into play. What I need to do is here is monitor capture and I need to type an ICMP and I need to say I need to export it. So I'm going to export and it's going to ask me how do I want to export it. Well, I'm going to say TFTP colon and then it says well URL. Now this is the one thing that if you're familiar with TFTP normally when you're doing like a, if you're copying this the running config to TFTP or you're, you're copying the uh, the, um, the startup config to, mem or to TFTP for a backup things like that here it's a little bit different. You actually have to specify the actual address. So 10.255.1.49 is my address. And I'm going to forward slash, I'm going to name this file. So I'm going to say r1 is going to be underscore icmp.pcap. This part right here, the dot pcap is really, really important. The reason why is because you need to name it so that Wireshark will be able to read it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key. And so that exclamation point is an indication that it was ex exported successfully. I'm going to go to R2 and do the exact same thing. I'm going to just hit the arrow, arrow a couple times to this export. And I'm going to say R2 underscore ICMP.pcap. Okay, that one does work as well. This assumes you have connectivity to that particular uh, virtual machine. Now I'm going to pull this virtual machine up. As you can see, I have these additional... Um, uh, pings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on this guy. This is going to launch Wireshark. Okay, now the key is here, now if we were to bring this down just a touch, you're going to see a lot of extra garbage in here, right? A lot of extra stuff that's in here. So you might, uh, you might say, well, how do I know how not to have this stuff do that? Well, simple. If you click right here and you right click and you go apply as filter, uh, let's see here. selected. So now what it's done is it's gone uh, it's gone out and it's got the traffic that's going the out, outbound ping, the inbound ping. And you can tell what packets they are, what direction they're going in as they're coming in and out. So now what I can do, I've now I've filtered this traffic out. So now what I'm doing is I am going to go in here and I'm going to save this PCAP as such. Now because if you were to just filter these packets here like I just did 
and save it, it's going to save it as the original file. So if I want to save it to where it just shows me this and not something else, you have to go to File, and you have to go to Export Specify Packets, and then you have to rename it. So I'm going to grab here, I'm going to say R1 to R2 ICMP. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Yes, replace it. There it's been saved. So now I can go ahead and click on this guy. I have R, R1 to R2 ICMP. I'm going to go ahead and close Wireshark out, and I'm going to do, go ahead and just double click on this guy. It's going to launch Wireshark, and there I have it. So now I have my R. Now this is traffic coming from R1. Okay. Now you'll see that here, if we were to expand this out, you had the echo, requ echo request. And if I was to break this out, you would see that I have ICMP. It's type 8 code 0, which means it's a request. This guy right here would be a type 0 code 0. It's an echo reply. So from a understanding how ICMP works, that would be really, really big to understand how that works. So now one might beg the question, okay, what about the other side? You said R2. Well, if you notice the size of these pings, they're 26K. If I go ahead and double click on this guy, it's going to launch Wireshark. And we have all this extra stuff. And you might say, well, why do you have a bunch of ISIS going on in the background? Well, it's because ISIS is actually running in the, in the background of that router. So if I was to come in here and say I want to do, this is now R2 to R1, I'm going to say that I want to go in here and I want to filter this, apply this filter and select it. So that does that. So that's R2 to R1. Now I can also come in here and say, okay, and this is all requests. Now if I want to go in here and I want to clear the filter, I would simply just click on the X and that would remove that. I want to come down here and go, let's say for instance I want to, I'm not sure if you can match on the if you can match on the protocol. Protocol preferences. I don't know um, specifically if that would work. IPv4. Maybe it will. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. But if we were to say as selected, if we were to save this, you would be able to save it as, as such and then you'd be able to go from there. But by if I the, the, the file gets bigger because you have all this extra traffic in the background. You have these uh, IS to IS LSPs going back and forth and whatnot, and it adds a lot of overhead. So you can go in here, let's say if I wanted to add, apply this to the filter, selected. Now I have just a bunch of IS IS traffic going back and forth. So I can say, well, once I'm, if I'm teaching IS IS, I can go in here and I can have, you know, how is the designated intermediate system chosen? And I can do a Wireshark capture and how that would go and go and manipulate that. So it's one of those things where now you can expand this out and break down how ICMP works and how ISIS works and how OSPF works and look at the BGP update that, uh, information. Now you might ask, well, can you do the similar things with, with ICMP or with, uh, with debugs? And yeah, you can. The important part here is that when you're dealing with ICM, when you're dealing with debugs, you're going to only be you're gonna you have to realize that when you're dealing with debugs, it's gonna be anything that is CPU local. So like for instance, if traffic is going through the router, it's data plane, which means it's not gonna be hitting the router. Or I'm sorry, not be hitting the router's CPU. The only time that unless you go in there and you're logging all your ACLs, so you might uh, that that is one way you could do that. You can go in and you can go up to and say um, IPv or IP access list. Uh, 100. Um, we'll say this is going to be all uh, extended or is it extended, extended all. And you can type in permit IP any any, and then you can go at the very end. You can log it. You can do a log. This will process switch everything. So I can do this, and then go underneath the interface and match that inbound and outbound. And then any traffic that comes through that gets tagged in the in the ACL will then be process switched. Not a good idea in a production environment, but it is possible to be done. And then you can go in there and you can do debugs on things. So um, it, it's although the drawback to it is not all inclusive. There's going to be some things that just won't be triggered. So anything that it's going from the router outbound, um, well, that, actually that that'll get caught too. Um, 
I'm pretty sure it'll catch everything. Uh, I haven't tested it out, so I can't say for sure on everything, but it should capture the majority of things. So that's going to be the, the key factor there. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where uh, the embedded packet capture is there for, for that reason. And you'll see a lot of this stuff going through um, as you as you, um, you follow through any of my courses that that'll be a big factor as we go forward. So as long as you understand how that piece works, you should be in really good shape. I wanted to keep this video kind of short because it's, you know, it's uh, pretty much to the point and I want to just dive right into how embedded packet capture worked and how to go and manipulate Wireshark and stuff like that. Granted, I'm not an expert in Wireshark by any stretch of the imagination. I know how to do some basic things with it and being able to analyze how packets are flowing uh, from a, just understanding the protocol flow is going to be a good idea. And that's for literally anything that you're studying. If you have the ability to throw a couple of ASAs and a couple of routers in and you want to do some packet captures and see how traffic is going back and forth, um, especially when you're starting to learn new things like radius or TACX or anything that's going to be going between uh, a firewall and a router and you know maybe a virtual machine to be able to get in there and actually see the data flows that that to me is really important because you, then you understand from a you know OSI perspective how things are put together so I hope that this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing